Maisie, an excitable, energetic and fearless five-year-old, danced her way down the library book aisles, spinning and twirling. Grasped tightly in her tiny hand was a new book, one she had not seen before. She was so excited by the book that she had already, in the confines of the reading tent, read the first three pages. Mummy, mummy, I want this one, Maisie exclaimed as her mother approached. Shh, Maisie's mum replied, holding her finger to her mouth. Maisie froze immediately, like a game of musical statues, before retracting her head into her shoulders, much like a little turtle. Maisie's mum crouched down and continued to whisper, What is the book called, Maisie, and what's it about? It's called Lilith and Gardy's Adventures. Gardy's the dog, you see, she said, pointing at the illustration of the dog. He looks just like Baxter, don't you think, Mummy? Mm, I suppose he does, Maisie's mum agreed, nodding her head. What type of adventures do they go on then? Lots and lots, Maisie declared, her head now out from its shell. They go horse riding, they sail on a boat, they take a trip on a train, they go to the zoo and they climb a tree, Mummy, but I'm not sure Gardy climbs trees because dogs don't have hands, but maybe once I read it I can teach Baxter to do that too. OK, Maisie, I can see that you're excited, but just take your time. Can I get it? Can I get it? Maisie asked insistently. Please? OK. Maisie's mum stood up and held her hand up for Maisie to take and they both made their way over to the desk. Maisie with a little spring in her steps. That night Maisie, all on her own, read the whole book for the very first time. In fact, she enjoyed the book so much that she read it a further two times before she eventually gave up fighting to stay awake. But during the night, Maisie awoke to the sound of a faint whisper. At first she thought it was her mum and dad talking in the other room, but it didn't sound like them. She slowly flickered her eyes open, still sleepy. She rubbed them before sitting up. Her room was dimly lit from her nightlight, but it didn't take her long for her to identify the source of the whisperers. Her mouth expanded to a smile, her cheeks puffed up and her eyes opened wide. Lilith and Gardy, she said aloud before, slapping both hands over her mouth. Lilith stopped pouring her tea and turned to look at Maisie. Maisie lowered her hands and cautiously smiled back whilst grasping her covers and tucking them under her chin. Lilith smiled again before waving Maisie across to join their little tea party. Now the next morning at breakfast, Maisie bundled into the kitchen, dancing and twirling, full of energy, lost in her own little world. Mummy, Maisie said as she stroked Baxter in his basket. Yes, darling? Maisie's mum replied as she collected lunch items out of the fridge. You'll never guess what I did last night. What did you do? Her mum asked hesitantly. I had tea with Lilith and Gardy. Relieved, Maisie's mum continued making lunch whilst asking, mm, Who are Lilith and Gardy? They're from my book, mum, Maisie scolded, placing her little hands on her hips. We got it yesterday at the library, silly. Oh, of course, sweetie, sorry. And put Maisie's cereal down. Mummy has a lot on her mind. Anyway, Lilith is a princess and Gardy is her dog and guardian, Maisie explained, taking a spoonful of cereal. What's a guardian? Mm, someone who looks after you, Maisie. Oh, OK, I suppose Baxter could be my guardian, Maisie mused, before taking another large spoonful of cereal. I'm not sure, Maisie. I don't think guardians are meant to sleep all day. That night, Maisie 
read Lith and Gardy's adventures another four times before reluctantly giving in to her heavy eyes, although she submitted more willingly this time around after last night. Once again, she heard the familiar, soft whisper of Lilith and immediately opened her eyes, excitement flowing through her body. This time, Lilith and Gardy were stood at the bedroom door and the door was slightly open. Noticing that Maisie was awake, Lilith waved at her follower and all three quietly made their way down the stairs and into the kitchen with Lilith leading the way. Baxter, located on the sofa in the kitchen, just opened one eye to see who was there. He watched as Maisie made her way to the back door and she gently unlocked it and opened it. Immediately, he jumped off the sofa and raced over to the door, tugging forcefully on Maisie's pink fluffy dressing gown, trying to stop her going out. Baxter, she whispered, stop it, Baxter. But the dog continued feverishly. Eventually, Maisie extricated herself from the small frantic dog and quickly closed the door, trapping him in the kitchen. Baxter frantically began to jump up, attacking the door handle. After a few leaps, he felt it give way, opening the door, allowing him to race out into the darkness after her. Following a familiar scent, he soon caught up with Maisie, trudging through the nearby field, barefoot. Again, he tugged on her dressing gown. Baxter, go home if you don't want to join us on our adventure, Maisie reprimanded. And Maisie struggled a little more with Baxter, before slipping out of her dressing gown and running off into the nearby woods. Instead of following her, Baxter turned and raced home as fast as his little legs could take him. You know, this adventure's not very much fun, Lilith, Maisie complained as she struggled through the mud. Lilith turned and smiled before whispering softly, it's not far, and when we get there, you know, we can play hopscotch. Maisie's face lit up immediately. She loved playing hopscotch. The trees suddenly disappeared, opening up into a small clearing that cut through the countryside. Here we are, Lilith said, pointing towards carefully arranged wooden planks on the ground. You go first. Maisie did not need to be told twice. She immediately began playing hopscotch, while Lilith and Gardy watched from the side, smiling. Maisie suddenly stopped. What's that hissing sound, Lilith? Lilith shrugged, still smiling broadly, while Gardy wagged his tail furiously. The hissing sound turned into a crackle, becoming louder and louder. Realising that it was coming from behind her, Maisie turned around and thud. It wasn't a loud noise the train made as it struck poor little Maisie tossing a crushed and deformed body off to the side like a lifeless doll. In fact, the driver did not even notice he had hit her, and the train just continued on into the darkness. It's terrible what happened to that little girl on the railway line just a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? The librarian whispered to a nearby mother. Yes, I can't imagine how her parents must be feeling, she replied sadly. You know, she came in yesterday, the mother, said the librarian. She came in to return this book. She concluded and slipped the book back on to the shelf. <laughs>